Good morning, folks. The geoengineers are back in the journals. We'll poke a bit of fun at astronomers. We've got galactic astrophysics and geophysics of catastrophe to close, and we are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun with little motion about which to get excited. We're going to take a look at the southern sunspot and then a solar wind forecast. After watching the northern group decay yesterday, let's see a light bridge develop within that umbra, decaying here on its way towards the western limb. Folks on the NOAA Enlil spiral, they are taking the solar wind speed of the upcoming coronal hole up with every model update. In about three or four days, we'll be taking geomagnetic activity not from a flare or CME, but from the coronal hole on the south. Up next, we're heading out of the galaxy to the Large Magellanic Cloud. Here they believe they have found a black hole based on its dynamical activity on a nearby star. They say they see the signature of it orbiting, but do they? The best way I can describe this is actually one of the ways they show it. They don't actually see a star jittering back and forth. They see it with a spectral signature. They're actually seeing a highly variable star with strong cyclic luminosity changes. Learned that one watching Sky Scholar. Anyway, folks, yesterday's volume of the journal Science has good and bad. The good is an excellent stamping on the debunk of the DAMA results. It wasn't dark matter, and today our assurances to that effect hopefully are ringing more clearly. But then, the Sultans of Spray got their turn, and in a three-piece series they went on a complain campaign about the opposition to spraying the sky. They even got Captain Chemtrail himself in there, David Keith. This is the group trying to get what they want while pandering, somewhat disrespectfully, in acknowledgement of the world's opposition. Okay, let's get back to science, because that last topic gets me as angry as yesterday's opening insinuation. We're coming to awesome work by Sophia and the team to see how the magnetic fields of the diffuse gas and plasma do not match the magnetic fields of the molecular clouds in a galaxy. Fantastic work here, but also in their explanation of the differences in dynamics. They spend a considerable amount of time trying to explain why these patterns are seen all around the galaxy, and they can only use the invisible pressure waves that spiral around the galaxy. I've said this before, I do not care if they call it the galactic current sheet, spiral shocks, feathers, spurs, or the spiraling pressure waves. Understand this, if they are strong enough to trigger stellar ignition from molecular clouds, they can trigger stellar outbursts as the waves hit the existing stars as well. I do suppose that one most benefits serious veteran observers, but this one is quite easy, and the title says it all and the centuries of lower volcanic emission that we've had can't last forever. You know, the record low activity of volcanoes 2016 through 2020 is tricking people into thinking that this 2021 volcano situation is scary or record or out of control. It's really not. But Earth's got that global cooling card to play when she wants to, and Earth has now gone about as long as we can see on the entire record without the Earth pulling that card. It's another huge reason that the planet has been warming here without that volcanic forcing, and it's coming sooner or later. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.